I'm going to ask you here about the bombshell from John Williams a couple days ago, which is our star stays lower, which I believe sign sig signals a shift lower in interest rates. Are you in investing at BlackRock pursuing lower yield, higher fixed income price? Well, it's really been a story of quite the opposite, Tom, right? It's about... <clears throat> I think we have a frozen Jeff Rosenberg. I think we were sorry. No, uh, okay. I, I'm I'm still here. The producer was just in my <laughs> ear there for a second. Um, there's a, there's a it's been going in the opposite direction. Obviously, it's it's about higher interest rates, and um, you know we've been investing along that way, as he talked about in terms of the curve. You know we're facing an inverted yield curve, and so the highest interest rates are in in the in the front end. You know the 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 long term R star story is is really about whether or not the, uh, policy is tight uh, right now, and you know. If our star is, as Williams laid out, then you know policy is tight, and that's what the Fed believes, and that's why they're taking a pause. What today's labor market report sort of says is, where's the tightness? Uh, you've raised interest rates 500 basis points. We're still delivering 300 base, 300,000 over 300,000 jobs. So the disconnect here is that you're not really seeing the slowing in the labor market. Where you're seeing the slowing is in the goods producing part of the economy. And the split in the outlook is goods and survey based data on goods is, is at recession type level. But uh, uh, services are, are holding in just fine. So Randy said earlier, you know, you got to look at the details. One of the details that sort of sticks out here is a turnaround in the goods producing areas of the economy in terms of hiring. That's a little bit worrisome for the Fed and the inflation because all the disinflation is coming from the goods. And so if goods prices are stabilizing and goods hiring is increasing, which is what we see in this report, then, you know, you may have the consensus outlook here, which is focused on these NAPM surveys, the PMIs, we got it earlier, the ISMs, you know, collapsing into recession levels. That may just be a nominal effect. Uh, and is really not telling you the story. And and for the Fed, yeah, it's a pause uh, or a skip. Sorry, it's a skip. And then you know a couple of more strong reports. And 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 it may not be that the rates and the real rate is as low as Williams thinks it is because you're not getting the effective tightening. Jeff. I keep wondering whether people have gotten too sanguine on the idea of inflation coming back to that 2% level of the Federal Reserve. And I'm looking right now at break-even rates, 2.2% over the next 5 to 10 years. Do you think that the suggestion here, with a skip by the Fed and a hot labor market report, suggests a stickiness and a resilience that is not priced into this market? Well, it's certainly not priced into the the, the break-evens. You know, they are reflecting the immaculate disinflation. And, yeah, the evidence hasn't really shown anything to support the immaculate disinflation. So there's very much a, a hope trade going on here in the fixed income market in two factors, the hope that inflation immaculately falls. And then the second implication of that is the Fed's going to be able to go back to its old playbook and ride to the rescue of asset prices and asset inflation uh, and, and cut interest rates by the end of this year, which is, you know, again, you just don't see anything in the data that supports that. So uh, I think this report is a little bit challenging. Yeah, the unemployment rate helps a bit, but it's a very noisy uh, uh, data uh, series. And mm -hmm. so we'll have to see there.